it is really very humbling when you read the excellent book to, uh, to be given the opportunity to speak about, to reflect uh, on his work and to speak about him, because uh, Prince uh, Sadruddin Akhan was, without any shadow of doubt, one of the great internationalists of uh, the 20th the 20th century, and uh, as you all know, he was for a good part of his professional career uh, uh, the United Nations first Deputy High Commissioner for Refugees and then High Commissioner for Refugees. So that experience is very central to, uh, to, his, uh, to his professional life. Just a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you. One is that it is very interesting reading the book, to realize the magnitude and extent of the challenges that he had to face in the 60s and early part of the 70s in dealing with refugees. You know, we tend, I tend, we all tend to think that today's challenges are the biggest ever. That there's never been such a bad situation that we have to face. True, we are facing pretty bad scientific challenges, but read the book and reflect on what he had to deal with. The decolonization in Africa in particular, which generated, as we all know, huge tensions, many conflicts that all produced refugees in unprecedented numbers. And uh, the prince was the first high commissioner that had to be really expansion of UNHCR's work beyond Europe and in a much more operational manner than before. The, uh, the, the, the displacement, the massive displacement that followed the, um, the independence of Bangladesh and the crisis that uh, ensured the conflict that followed that, 10 million people displaced by that conflict. I do remember, you know, to quote another great internationalist, that when I was in the Great Lakes region of Africa, generally remember that very well, when I was in the Great Lakes region of Africa in the mid-90s, and we had to address one million refugees in four days from Rwanda into Congo, I sent a message to headquarters saying this must be the greatest human refugee crisis in a child has ever had to address. And I remember that Sergio Vieira de Mello wrote back and said, you should never say this. Because, and he quoted the Bangladesh <coughs> crisis of 1971, which happened under the tenure of, of the prince, as a, a very significant precedent in that respect. And then there was Latin America, uh, dictatorships in those years, and uh, 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 UNHCR was very active in dealing with the people that were fleeing from persecution, human rights abuses. So uh, many, many global challenges that uh, we can easily compare with today's conflict, uh, conflicts and, 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 and situations. So truly, uh, Prince Sadurdin Agahan witnessed um, somehow, like we do today, the, the transformation of forced displacement into a different, a new phenomenon. Um, um, he witnessed the emergence of a world in which conflicts were becoming much more diverse, much more <coughs> spread, and at the same time very localized, but with external interferences. So these are patterns that have not fundamentally changed, of course, Many things are different today, but some of the conflict patterns that we sometimes think are emerging today were already uh, in sometimes in embryonic fashion present during uh, his days. And I think he understood, and the book is quite uh, uh, exhaustive in this sense, he understood very well that uh, these situations required new approaches. UNHCR before then in the few years of existence before his tenure had been essentially dealing with individual cases, with uh, the people coming from then uh, the, the Soviet bloc into the West. So UNHCR had to remodel itself very much 
as an operational organization, and he understood that uh, uh, very well, and he understood also that new approaches were required. I was very interested in uh, reading, uh, for example, all the work done to repatriate, it's a bit sad to say, South Sudanese to what was then the southern part of Sudan. I say sadly, but of course, this is, we are grappling today with a new exodus from South Sudan. But certainly, you know, the fact that he focused on mass repatriation, that was completely new, and he had to, to somehow invent as he was uh, going along. It's interesting to read that he was so much, there was so much debate on internally displaced people already then in the 60s and 70s because of the nature of conflict, that there was debate about the need to involve in humanitarian responses at an early stage development actors, that there was debate around the relationship between refugee crisis and state security. These are all things that are very present in today's discussions. And what is, I think, uh, phenomenal is to uh, appreciate through the book how much the Prince, the High Commissioner, was focused on solutions. He understood that UNHCR's, of course, uh, key mandate was to ensure international protection, but that it was equally important for UNHCR to actively pursue solutions to refugee, to refugee crisis. And this is what he did relentlessly and with great political acumen. And, uh, for example, all the work that he did on resettlement, on resettlement of Ugandan Asians when they were expelled from Uganda, he witnessed the, the beginning of the Indo-Chinese crisis and so forth. These are all very good uh, examples which the book helps us understand very well. Um, today we may be witnessing really the beginning of new dimensions of human mobility and forced displacement. Certainly, as I said, Prince Sadruddin Agafan in his times did that. And I think his strength was really the ability to adapt the organization he was heading whilst remaining very strongly firm and uh, uh, loyal and faithful to the principles that uh, the organization was the custodian of. And he did that with uh, a very unique approach. It was mentioned a few minutes ago true internationalist approach. Not only when he was with UNHCR in those long years, but also in his other endeavors, in his other humanitarian endeavors. I actually met him very briefly when he was the coordinator in Iraq in the early 90s, but also in what he did for cultural heritage, in what he did for the environment for many, many years. All this is very uh, clearly explained in the book. And all this with an underlying, discrete and effective political engagement. This approach, this internationalist approach, uh, to which he brought the strength of his cosmopolitan background, strongly rooted, however, in his culture, and he, he, in, he, in his faith-based culture, this approach today, I believe, uh, is looked at with some suspicion by many, but needs to remain very relevant and needs to remain an approach on which it will be very useful today to reflect. So I wish you a very good uh, 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 discussion on this very important thing. We thanks again to the author and to the panelists for giving us this very good opportunity.